It's, it's uh, I love Limerick because you're worth it too. This is ilovelimerick.com. It's Michelle McMahon here, and I am joined by Mr. World, Kamal Ibrahim. Kamal, thank you for talking to us. You're welcome. Nice Back to be here. home in Limerick. Will Limerick always be home, though? Of course, it always has been home. You know, it's, it's where I've come from, it's where I'm going to come home to. So, uh, no, I mean, I'm not going to be turning my back or forgetting Limerick in any way, shape, or form, but uh, I mean, I have opportunities there to take advantage of, and they're going to be outside the country, so I'm going to be going. But I'm, like I said, I'm going to be coming home to Limerick every time, every chance I get. Yeah. And uh, t tell us the backstory. What part of Limerick did you grow up in? Uh, Right around here, actually, this main <laughs> area right here. Um, Do my you have mom, this view? <laughs> no, no. Actually, my mom family, my mom's family were actually. I think they had a house on the street. Um, but I was born in the maternity hospital, just literally over there, and uh, I grew up in Thomagate. So um, I went to school in JFK, which is just behind the hotel. I went to school in Art School Reach. So this entire section of the city is where I grew up. So uh, it's all home, sweet home to me, right here. And how how do you think? Limerick has changed uh, during your lifetime, from your childhood to, to where you are now. Limerick is a very different place now than it was back then. And uh, I suppose for me, obviously, in the kind of the, in the things I've been doing, being out and about and being more in the public eye now than ever before, I've got to meet so many people. And it's just, uh, I mean, Limerick is a small place, but you'd be surprised the amount of, I don't know, I don't know the only word that I can think of to describe it is like the amount of love and care that you get from everybody around you. But that's, that's, um, that's something that's steadily been growing and I've been more and more exposed to over the years that I've come to and like I said, I've got to know more and more people and it's like the family's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, you know, so uh, but that's, that's, that's kind of the way it's changed so far. Which is, which is lovely to find a, a community spirit in, in a very large place. Yeah, that's what well, it is. It, it, that's exactly what it is, like one big massive community as well. I think that's Limerick has become that um, because I think going back, okay, maybe because I was younger, I didn't do so much or see so much, but as I've gotten older, it's like almost as if, it went from my neighbours and the immediate family and friends that I had around to the local community to the city and now it's, it's just becoming one big community so uh, that's I, I suppose that, that's why it feels so much like home. I can go anywhere in Limerick and it feels like home. Huh? And uh, obviously you know you went to, to Mr World representing us and I think what one thing that was really nice about it is maybe that you didn't have red hair and freckles. You know, <laughs> it, it is a face of a changing Ireland, uh, you know a, a more rich, culturally rich place. Did you feel like that was accepted when you were growing up. Looking back now, everything that I've been through in my life, it's, it's, it's added, it's made me who I am. And uh, so I don't have any grudges. The people back then that I might have had a hard time with are the same people literally now that are coming to my door shaking my hand. It's, it's amazing the way things have changed. But uh, I never felt like I was the odd one out. I never felt different in the sense of, you know, that I was isolated. Um, it, you know, I think it's great because I've actually watched the attitudes change. I mean, I, I was kind of seen as the, the I suppose, yeah, the different guy. I mean, back then, like, I think I was one of the first. My dad and myself, my family would have been one of the first coloured family in, in, in Limerick, which is funny to say because, you know, I can say that, but I know, that, you know, even though I was born here, um, we, we did stand out, but we blended in at the same time. I mean, look, look the way Limerick has changed now. You can go e everywhere you go. There's someone from different nationality, different part of the world. I don't know if anyone's told you, but you're you're a pretty man. I don't know. I don't know if that's been put out there yet. Is is that why you got into the the modelling? Was was no, that's that something not. someone suggested to you or? One day I was invited to uh, an Ann Summers charity fashion show. Uh, it was I on was the really South worried Coast. about how that sentence. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, but I went there as a, just just to, to support the charity, and I ended up talking to uh, one the, the fashion agent there. She came up to me. I was sitting in the very front row, and she said, "Oh, you got you got you got a great look. I'd love if you came up and you modelled an outfit." I was like, I'm sorry, I'm Kamala, and you are, you know, I wasn't, I knew who, who this woman was. Um, anyway, it was Hilary Thompson, and uh, she just wanted me to come up, just for a bit of fun. She, she, she thought that she'd be very impressed if I went up, so I did. Uh, I got a good reaction, I had a great time, and then I said, okay, well, maybe I'll give this a go. I got in touch with Celia. Um, Celia really liked me, and I think I met her on a Thursday, and the following Monday I started working, out. my first job was in Ireland AM, um, modeling for her. The Mr. Ireland came up then because... I mean, I'd been modeling for five years and just part time, and I, I suppose you could say I kind of had a reputation in Limerick as Celia's model. So they asked me would I be interested. I said no the first time. Um, then, with some very light persuasion, I got to learn a bit about it, and uh, I decided to do it. I won it. That was fantastic, and that was my ticket to go to Mr. World. The Mr. World competition itself is not based on looks. Not just a pretty face. It's absolutely not, and that, that's actually the last thing that they were looking at. Whatever about the national competition, the Mr. Ireland, the Mr. Ring, and those competitions, yes, you have to do the whole swimsuit and catwalk and all that, but the Mr. World competition has none of that in, in it. 
Um, it's more based on, or solely based on, um, leadership skills, your, your motivation, your drive, your determination to succeed, your character and personality. Yes, your look does come into it, but that's already taken into account. You're actually, you're, you're there. Did you know that going to the Mr. World, from the, from the Mr. Ireland competition, you know, there's this certain space of time and, you know, you'd assume after a competition like that, you work on the physique and you prepare for the interview. But did you know at that point that it wasn't going to be? No, you know, actually, the no. We, I and everybody else, I mean, I was training like crazy. I mean, I was in gym five days a week, I was a strict diet. I mean, I was looking after myself um, because I, I thought, well, I knew we'd have to be in good physical shape. Yeah, I didn't expect to win the competition first, but I went in there hoping to make top 15. Uh, the fact that I won was absolutely amazing. I didn't expect it. I didn't know how to react to it. Um, Coming home to the reception and the, the response, again, overwhelming. I'm still trying to get my head around the whole, oh, come on, you're a celebrity. I don't feel, I don't feel any different. I'm not any different. Everything around me is, is changing. So I'll be traveling around the world acting as Mr. World on uh, doing, doing, those, du doing those duties. Um, on top of that, then, there's going to be events, a lot of international events to do with fashion and culture and um, fundraising and charity that I'll be involved in, whether hosting or presenting or being a guest at. All the while doing, there will be some modeling involved with endorsement opportunities, and also they're going to be working to help me get more work on TV as a presenter, which is what I want to do. So there's a lot there. Um, the opportunities are endless, but it, it, there's a lot of time that needs to go into it and effort. And it's, but it's enjoy. You know, it's it's work, but it's not work. You know, so it's uh, it's it's going to be a very busy year. Um, highlights so far, people that you've met. That I've had a chance to meet actually since I won the Mr. Ireland competition. I've had a chance to meet a lot of celebrities. Um, I've met Louis Walsh. I've met Alexandra Burke. I met the guys from JLS. Um, I've met. I was. I performed with Alicia Dixon um, at the Mr. World. Paul Potts, um, like some other guys in Dublin, Rosanna Davidson, and those guys. I've, I've met them, and uh, I've, some of them are. I'm happy to say are, are friends of mine now as well. Um, I had a chance to meet Eamon, or Colin Farrell uh, as well about three months ago. So it's it's a great it's great to get to meet these people and just to see what they're really like and you learn from them as well. So, um, I but you know. I told them a party down here and invite I Love Limerick. I, 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 think, that's, I think that's how that one should pan out. Just throwing an idea yeah, out there. Celebrity V, 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 IP only party. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure, no problem. And what about the ones you'd like to meet? Is there anyone that you're like, oh, the day um, that I meet that person? I would love to meet Nelson Mandela. I'd love to meet, and I see the thing is I, I might be going, I don't know yet. It's not confirmed, but I heard rumors that I might be going to South Africa and, um, so if I do that, that is definitely one person that I would want to meet and more so I'd love to try and get him to come back to Ireland. Now, and that's where the whole ambassador role that I have comes into play. Uh, him and people like him are, they're the type of people that I'm going to get to meet over the next 12 months. And what I want to do is, I mean, I do want to try and bring them to Ireland and to Limerick. Everyone remembers when the Pope came, when John F. Kennedy came, you know. So if I can bring even one person just here, just to say I've been to Limerick and whatever they think about it, uh, that's a way to measure at least so, some of the things that I'm doing. And, uh, but definitely a Nelson Mandela would be the, num the, first, the number one on my list. Okay, well, wherever you go and wherever the future takes you, we know Limerick will be home and we are also incredibly proud of you. So thank you very, very so, much for talking to I Love Limerick. No problem, no problem. It's great.